you smoke it, I got the haze. Hey. And if you're hungry, I, I got, got fillets. fillets. Let me tell you, I thought <laughs> I thought that Anderson Park said I got the lays. I did. Yeah. I had to listen to it twice. <laughs> you heard that he said fillets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Budden was going in on him about that, and then Ma was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said fillets. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one yeah, yeah. Yes. because I sent out a whole tweet where I was like, LOL, Anderson Park is hilarious, <laughs> talking about I got the lays. And then immediately I got a tweet. I heard fillets, and I googled it. I was like, "Oh, it's fillets." He deleted it. He was like, "Delete tweet." Sour yes. cream and onions, <laughs> cheddar cheese. I got everything that you need. I got the tangy barbecue. Because uh, in my head I was like, "That's so breezy of him <laughs> to say I got fillets." But that wasn't it. That wasn't so it. Funny. Ah, but so yeah, funny. what's good, y'all? Welcome back to the No Chaser Podcast. I'm Tim Chantaransu. I'm Ricky Shucks. I'm Nikki Blades. <sighs> I'm gonna change my name to Tim Chantaransu. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I tell you, um, growing up, I got Tim. Got the wrong song. <laughs> Tim. No, no. Tim chant the wrong song. Tim got the wrong soup. <laughs> Tim Chattanooga. Tim Chimichanga. Yeah. Tim um, uh, everything. Did, did you guys ever get made fun of for your names? I don't like my name name being on the internet. Right, right, right. So right. I can't, but yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Nikki Blades. My name is Nicole. Yeah. And uh, I'm the best. All the DJs want to fill my breast. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, but, but not, I mean, not really. Uh, anytime you are an athlete, your name's going to get made fun of, or people just try to find ways, but not to the extent that you did. My brother, though, my brother's name, his first name is Kahua Okahana. Kahua Okahana. How yes. can you make fun of him? They would call him Coca Cola. Uh, Coca Cola, <laughs> Kahlua, Kahuna, Okahana, the Kahuna. Big Kahuna, Big Kahuna. But that's tight though. Yeah. But that's not his name. They could call him Kahua o o o Mama. Okay, Mama. <laughs> Nobody was that creative growing up. They was just they would just call him Coca Cola. But my brother's name got made fun of. I didn't really get made fun of. I had a very typical name, Nicole. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. nothing special or fancy about it. And Blades didn't come in until college. What? And then it was cool. Word. Yeah. I mean, as you know, to be honest, I'm thinking about it right now. And in high school, when people should have made fun of my last name, mm. they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> like they didn't really make fun of my last name. Uh, it was like, yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. It was just Tim. What, what did the teacher say during roll? They would mm, come think of it. Let me, let me, let me think about it. Uh, they would say, they would just. Man, I don't know. They would just say uh, Tim Ch and I'm like, that's me. Uh, you wouldn't uh, even let him get yeah, out. I was like, like that's, that, that, that's me. Who called you Chantarangus? Chantarangus. Uh, I don't know. That was that was like later in life. But I do remember. Let's talk about high school. I remember uh, specifically one time. Just when I think about high school and I think about teachers, it has nothing to do with the names. It's just a fun story that I love. That's um, nice. Uh, Thank you. Make sure really, sorry, I was looking at the hoodie. I was like, damn, that's a nice ass hoodie. Make I had to sure you touch get it. your goodie brand. Yes, uh, LA does not nice. equal Hollywood. People yeah. were complaining about wow. how Bro. how much we charged so until nice. I got a, I got a homegirl who DM'd me and she was like, I finally was able to get one of your goodie sweaters. Uh and they didn't sell out. And I was like, which one did you get? And she was like, the L.A. not Hollywood one. And I was like, oh, okay, I see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because these are on the pricier side, right? Yeah. And a lot of people were mad at us about that. Ooh. But when she got it, she was like, I see why these are this much. Yeah. She was like, the quality is crazy. It's there. And then in person, it's so different than online, right? Yeah. Because you never know. And I was looking at you, and I was listening to what you were saying, but it kind of zoning <laughs> out at the same time because yeah. I, I was looking at the quality of the material, and I was like, damn, I just had to feel it, and it's so different in person. And the details in the fringe. So These aren't really just good. hoodie material. No, this no. is it's like, not at all. Yeah. That's, this is different. That's we got sorry. hidden pockets on that bit. Yeah. And each one is hand distressed. Right. That's so. Yeah. Because yeah. I got into a little dabbled into the merch world and getting to see. And I'm so familiar. I, yeah. I mean, I was blowing up Rick. I was like, Rick, help me out here. <laughs> uh, but as you see it in person, this shit is like, it looks soft, but it also has like, it's thick. Yeah. It's thick as fuck. 
This is not your regular and then the stitching, the embroidery. Yeah. Yeah. The embroidery. And then the um, fringe. I don't know if you guys can see, but the distress. The, you can't just get shit distressed nah. without somebody doing that by hand. Yeah. He's Goody by brand. Hand. Dot com. Such Dot a com. plug. Your shirt, yeah. And then, side note, your shirt is nice. Thank you. Super nice. What about my pants? Oh, my God. Look at those sweats. Oh, the Nikki Blade sweats are popping. <laughs> the, the biggest compliment I got was when Rick got the sweats and mm-hmm. he put them on. And what did you say? I forgot, but I love them. You love them. <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but they're, they're comfortable as fuck. They fit, like, right. Yeah. Like the way you want, like joggers almost, but they're sweats. Yes. I love these shits. Yeah. Sweats can be a struggle. Oh. Um, and the Nikki Blade sweats fit you. very yeah. nicely. Um, Side note, none of this was planned. Not at all. <laughs> no. We're I, not making any of no, this no, shit no, no, up. No. The shit is good shit. I, I genuinely went and I touched Tim's sweatshirt. Yeah. If you guys aren't watching and you're just listening, I reached over and I touched swim uh, Tim's sweatshirt and I looked at Rick because I realized that I was on camera and <laughs> It was like you touching his why you touching his sweatshirt for, and then we went into that. Here's a funny, quick little side note, right? Somebody commented on my Instagram, mm-hmm. and they were like, "I really loved the message of LA not equaling Hollywood," mm-hmm. but she was like, "They're so expensive," and I feel like that's contradictory. She's like, "I love the message that you guys are putting out that LA doesn't equal Hollywood," but she's like, "But they're so expensive and." I feel like that's contradictory of the message you're putting out. I was like, hold on a second, boo. Uh, I'm like, first off, thank you. For, first of all, of all, first off, yeah. thank you. Second of all, uh, the whole message was about people misconstruing that all the bouginess of mm-hmm. Hollywood was an LA thing. I'm yeah. like, we can still say that LA is real as fuck and charge a lot for our yeah. hoodies. We didn't say LA was broke. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then to, to add to that, I had people going on my site and they were telling me and comparing our brands. It was like, oh, Goody Brands is way better and they're way cheaper and this, this, and that, and third. I said, first off, please continue to support them because that's how I got a job. Is because because we got a job. Because they got jobs. But then second of all, uh, a lot of people People don't understand what goes into it and I didn't fully understand the the behind the scenes stuff until I started doing it yeah. the quality of the material the getting things stitched where you get a shit from the packaging just the overall price and to that person and to those people they don't realize what you guys put into it or what goes yeah. in like this product here and again not a plug but a plug that's not normal hoodie yeah. material. Do we have something else to talk about, or can we go? I mean, depth this let's go this. up. No, we can talk about. Yeah. Talk I about. mean, a lot of people ask about it because yeah. we got compared. You know, yeah. my brand and then your guys's, which is well established, and you guys do volumes and the numbers are completely different. But people don't understand how it works. So, yeah. Rick. Um, so everything has its own price. You know what I'm saying? And some things that you would think shouldn't be as expensive as they are they just are these sweats for example you got two embroidery hits on here mm-hmm. that already makes these more expensive than some just normal sweats mm-hmm. you had to pay for the sweats these aren't cut and sew correct no okay so you had to pay for the sweats then you had to pay somebody to embroider you had to pay them to embroider mm-hmm. twice and each one of these depending on what type type of deal you got could be from two dollars if you got the hookup to like five dollars a piece on just one pair you know what i'm saying when you're selling clothes ideally you want to make three times what you paid for. and shipping is a motherfucker bro y'all stay on our heads about the shipping shipping. for shipping bro like we don't we we are not in control of how much no. shipping is, yeah. okay? If the shipping is a lot, that's because we're paying a lot yeah. to yes. ship to you guys. Oh, that so. was so upsetting when I got international orders and I felt so bad because as a consumer, mm. I was thinking the same thing. But as somebody on the business side, I yeah. understood the struggle even more. You know what? It's time to be conversational. You know what I'm saying? Um, in a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company Company that broke all the rules. And you know, it's funny because with fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs, MVMT movement grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 countries across the globe. Wow, now that's just crazy. Now, movement has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from your screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that don't break the bank, all designed out of their California headquarters. Now, that's just 
dope, all right? Uh, personally, you know, I've been wearing their new minimal sport dive watch because your boy loves deep sea diving. It's so sleek and professional looking that you'd never know it could dive down 100 meters deep into the water. Isn't that crazy? Now also, movement watches have the look and quality of a $400 to $500 watch you're paying for at a department store, but cost a fraction of the price because they were built online and own their process from start to finish. Now, isn't that just lit? You get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free, and if you don't love it, you can ship it right back for free, okay? And third, I've gotta spend all day in front of my computer and my Everscroll blue light filtering glasses are a game changer. It really helps with eye strain and poor sleeping patterns. And I love the modern style of the frames, okay? And check it out, just for y'all, I got a special treat, okay? If you wanna elevate your style and look, and don't break the bank. Join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash no chaser. Again, that's mvmt.com slash no chaser. Now, if you're like me, you're missing out on your workout routine because you know your boy stays in the gym every day when I could. I'm a fitness freak, all right? Uh, and you know, you miss your favorite fitness instructors, right? You know, <laughs> I just miss going to the gym, I miss being fit, I miss working out every day. There are at-home alternatives, but they're just not the same. I've been looking for an experience that makes me feel like I'm back in class, moving with my favorite instructors to heart-pounding playlists. That's what led me to Soul Cycle At-Home Bike. The Soul Cycle At-Home Bike converts your home into a Soul Cycle studio. It's perfect, right? The 21-inch touchscreen houses a revolutionary sound system that was specifically engineered for this bike and Soul Cycle's iconic playlist. Just iconic, bro. Your monthly membership also gives you unlimited access to the Equinox app where you can stream classes from other top tier brands like Equinox, Rumble, TB12, Pure, Yoga, and Solid Core. Now, come on. You can get your Soul Cycle at home bike in just one to three weeks and they have financing options available to make attaining goals achievable. Now, come on. I think you guys are gonna love it. The touchscreen is dope. You know, the sound system is dope. I mean, you can work out from home. I mean, come on, I love it, all right? And uh, just for you guys, get your Soul Cycle at home bike today by visiting mysoulcyclebike.com slash no chaser and use promo code no chaser to get a complimentary pair of at home select cycling shoes with your purchase. That's mysoulcyclebike.com slash no chaser, promo code no chaser to get a complimentary pair of cycling shoes with the purchase of your Soul Cycle at home bike. Now that's just lit. Mysoulcyclebike.com slash no chaser, promo code no chaser. All right, so let me explain that to y'all. Yes, break it, please, okay, so, break it out. So shipping and fulfillment, right? First of all, if your business doesn't do a certain amount of orders, you don't get price breaks mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. postal service you're using. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's a significant amount of orders. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You can be doing 600 orders a month and still be paying a lot of fucking money for that shit. Yeah. What is this? Oh, so a lot of these people who order free shipping past a certain amount, they're doing a lot of orders. They It doesn't cost them that much to ship. Or they're getting their stuff done in like India or something like that, yeah. and they're paying very little for it to be done, so like, they can afford to lose the money. Fashion over Forever Twenty One shit. Yeah. yeah, it's such a huge scale. That's why the shipping is little. Yeah, exactly. It's and like it, they're they're charging you six times what they paid, so yes. they don't have to charge you that much for shipping. Because they're getting your favorite dress that you just ordered. They bought that for a dollar. They yeah. charged you twenty five for it, and that's why they say free shipping after a certain price because they already took all your money. Yeah, exactly. So so like this hoodie, this is this is cut and sew. It's completely like we made a um. You made a, a like a stencil. An yeah. Outline. Yes. You, you this isn't us fabric. just yeah. printing a picture this, on a hoodie. And, yeah. it, and in order to do that, that goes through a whole process. And so this design could be um, trademarked, and you go through the whole thing of where this is they own this. Yeah. Cut. Exactly. Yeah. Like we could do that, but to do that. It's expensive, especially That's with the fuck. the quantity we did, the way we did it, just to make sure it got here in a timely manner, all of that stuff. It cost us a lot. So the only way to make any profit, you have to price it at what it's priced at. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, if you're a business who does a bunch of different pieces, you can make stuff up. You know what I'm saying? What we used to do is a T-shirt. A T-shirt, we get it for a decent cost or whatever. But a hat, we get it for really cheap. It's a flat. So what we would do is we could put a T-shirt up for $25 where that's not making a lot of profit. 
but a hat we could put it for 35 mm. and that's making so much profit it makes up for the um the t-shirt and shit right, right? right and that's something y'all don't even realize people are willing to pay 40 50 60 dollars for a hat depending on who it's from or the design on it and hats are probably the cheapest shit to make right you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but you guys have these thoughts in your head that you know what's what yeah <laughs> and you think the t-shirt needs to be cheap that shit was expensive the hoodie is expensive yeah Them pants expensive this jersey Oh, expensive oh i'm sure so, so this jersey didn't even get put out yet because i wasn't happy with it <laughs> by the way so the amount of time that goes into each piece and i know the guys can speak on this because you guys put a lot of thought into it so my first drop everything was uh surrounded around the brand and then a certain image in in particular mm-hmm. i wanted to drop these jerseys but yeah. unfortunately because of my budget and this was all coming out of my pocket yeah I couldn't afford to drop these because I still wanted to add embroidery yeah. and this is mine. But what I would want to sell is the embroidery because I personally love custom MLB jerseys and it had to be done correctly. So when the person that I was working with brought me these, I said, that's cool, but I'm not selling this. Yeah. And, and that just goes to show there's so many things that everybody has in their closets that is like, this will never see the light of day because it's mm-hmm. not good enough. Yeah. And right. this has blades on the back of it. I think this one has blades on the back, but I told them, I said, the next time it comes out, I have to have it stitched and knowing the price of it, I didn't know if anybody would actually buy them. Right. Because, yes, it the would, risk. because it would be so expensive. I wanted to come out with a Letterman jacket and this mm, one. And yeah. I have them, but if they don't sell, I'm asked out. And if right. I do custom orders, that's way more expensive. Yeah. And then the shipping, because the weight of a jacket, mm-hmm. it's just so much to consider. But when people go online and then they compare other companies, it's easy to say Fashion Nova because they're so well known. And what they did is the uh, fast fashion. Mm-hmm. Fast fashion came over, but you know what's countering that is thrifting. People have started thrifting a lot Bro. more, but <laughs> it also game. allows space for quality products to live and people to appreciate things that are going to last. So yeah. I've seen Rick in these sweats several times Mm -hmm. yes and the dick print is popping and it makes me so proud (laughs) it makes me so proud every time i see a minute because the biggest compliment you can get is that nice dick is that's it they were like yo nikki sweats makes the dick print look so good so people like hey look a little weird (laughs) a little (laughs) saggy saggy. but a lot of my money went into packaging i wanted i wanted a really i wanted a good package a nice solid stiff package yeah. for you guys but that was another cost that i didn't even consider yeah i mean there's so much co- everything costs like yes. everything costs yeah. like that jersey um so with the, that's print then, right yeah this one's print so yeah. i have print on the sleeve print on the chest do you then... remember the cost <laughs> this I, they didn't even get to the cost when they brought this one because they said they wanted to just check it out first yeah. and it has print on the back yeah okay see so you got three print hits mm-hmm. on a pretty it's a pretty uh a good basic. quality yeah. is it lined yeah okay so that's probably 17 dollars before the print yeah mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. if you got somebody who's good at sourcing probably get it for 16 14 lowest yeah and then you got to do the printing and shit right now the fact that it's printed is going to make people feel like it should be less. Right. You're going to want the applique. The right. Less the as opposed to fucking um, like stitched on. Okay. Yeah, stitched even, on. So even looking it's at called your... applique is what they yes. use for the jerseys. Because like looking this as an example, you mm-hmm. have two different textures on yeah. one, you know, one hoodie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the back, it has a giant print on that too. You know what I'm saying? That's like, a whole, that's expensive. There's no way we was going to fucking uh, embroider that shit. No. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, they would want the applique patches on there. And when you get to doing that, you have to make sure that the jersey itself is a good quality to hold the patches. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, when you wash that shit, it's going to crinkle. And We've dealt with that in the past. So much shit. But but that's what the public doesn't know. Right. And I get it. You don't know that. Totally. But like, if you if a brand that you like ever drops something, you're like, this is too fucking expensive. Just shut up. <laughs> not it's to be a, a dick reason. like that. But it's like, even if it's not for, even if they're fucking gouging you, yeah. you don't need it. Ah, you know, nowadays I don't be trying to go out. I got this new baby. I'm trying to be home, be safe with the baby, so I don't go out to eat like I used to, you know? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering 
seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Bet you didn't know that. Now, check this out. I bet you also didn't know that HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. I mean, come on. With 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, there is something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity, okay? HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need with customizable orders every week. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Come on. And now uh, if y'all watch the vlogs and you know that me and Chia use HelloFresh all the time, especially during the pandemic quarantine situation, your boy used to never cook and now I be in the kitchen whipping it up like a professional, all right? And just for you guys, I got a special treat. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NoChaser12 and use code NoChaser12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Wow, that's just lit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NoChaser12 and use code NoChaser12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Now, I just want to talk to you guys from the heart real quick, okay? Because as the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable, we're all looking for as much comfort as we can get. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to discuss this in my own words here. Being crammed in the middle seat of a plane sucks. Talking to a coworker who has food in her teeth, uncomfortable. Unexpected visits from a partner's family, uncomfortable. That's why we got to make the world as comfortable as possible with the purple mattress, okay? Purple is comfort reinvented. Only purple has the grid, a stretchy gel material that's amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. I don't know how it does it. It's just fantastic. Because of how it's designed, the grid doesn't trap air. Air actually circulates and flows through it so you'll never overheat. I mean, come on. And you know, now I've been carrying around this baby all day, you know what I'm saying? My neck and my back. Again, I need that purple comfort, brother. You know what I'm saying, brother? And right now you can try purple mattresses risk-free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available too. Wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Call to action for you guys. Purple really is comfort for an uncomfortable world. Right now you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more, go to purple.com slash nochaser10 and use promo code nochaser10. That's purple.com slash nochaser10. Promo code nochaser10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. I'm just going to say it one more time. Purple.com slash nochaser10. Promo code nochaser10. Terms apply. Facts. You know what I'm saying? But like, you, if you if you can't afford to buy, what's the point of getting mad at that? That's true. It's just like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to buy that shit. <laughs> well, you remember when the Jordans came out, so a lot of the shoes started falling apart. Mm -hmm. you remember, there was, a, there was a certain year where the quality of it just went to shit. And then all those shoes from that year, they started falling apart. Yeah. The only good thing that happens from something like that when you bought it is that either the company itself fixes it, fixes the problem, and comes out with better quality, or people go and they start paying more for older stuff that was made in a better year and yeah. then they just hold on to it. Yeah. And totally you're like, like what the hell is going on? And the price fluctuates because of the consumer, not because of a lot of the people in the back. It's what's in demand. Yeah. Side note, these are not fake. <laughs> Rick is gonna have to justify have to his shoes every time. time Look, now. If y'all ever see me in some shattered backboards, they are a hundred percent fake. A hundred percent fake. <laughs> Unless I get them for him for his birthday. Oh, right. Okay. Oh shit, I might just do that. Do that. Hey, when shattered you see that price, you go you gonna change your mind. You're gonna be like, damn, do I like them? That shattered backboards eleven and a half, right? <laughs> um, yep. yep. Okay, done deal, done deal, done deal. So, so Tim is gonna go slide into some sneakerheads DMs to get No, I'm gonna start getting I, I I've hit up all my sneakerhead homies, bro. They they like, yeah, I don't know. I even hit up some who do customizations. I'm Ooh, like, bro, just make me some. My dude, <laughs> look, if I film me giving them to you, it's a oh, write off. Look at that. True, very true. Okay, okay. I like sneakers too. <laughs> You get them for free. So fuck you. I don't care. I still want them from you. I want a birthday gift wow. too. All right, we'll talk about it. Sheesh. Speaking of shit that these kids don't know about, mm -hmm. there was a dude. I don't know how old he was. He emailed me the other day talking about, Tim, please, can you put me in movies? I'm trying to be an actor. <laughs> and I hit him back, and I was like, my dude. I've been grinding for 15 years, <laughs> and I'm barely 
getting into like any type of like I have like five ten minute scenes in movies, dog. Yeah. My guy, I've been in like I've I've been doing I've been at this shit for like all like a decade and a half, yeah. and I'm barely in this shit, right? And I'm like, bro, do you have? A, 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 a reel of yeah. your acting credentials? Do you have skits? Do you have something? Do you have anything? And literally, dog, his reply, his email was, I just thought that you had to know people to get on in Hollywood, right? And I'm like, okay, look, that definitely helps. Yeah. But, but also, you don't know me. <laughs> but you don't know me? Yeah. And what... Like I'm trying, I'm I've been in this shit, and I'm I'm barely getting my foot in the door. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, what do you think I'm gonna help you do? And he's like, and he was like, bro, he was like, man, I just thought that like I could like email you and and oh, no no, this is literally what he said. He said, I've just been emailing people that have clout and seeing if they could help me out. And I was like, kid, I like. First of all, bro, you got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to be able to, like, I'm like, I've been doing this shit for, like, over 10 years. I've been going on mad auditions. Mm -hmm. I've been, like, I took improv classes. Yeah. I was in theater. And I've been doing this shit. I did mad auditions that led to nothing. Nothing. I've been on meetings that went nowhere. Nowhere. And, <laughs> like, and I'm barely even kind of fitting into where I'm trying to get into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, and I feel like these, these fucking... I'm I'm like wait, why why you know why yeah. because they see people from social media that get opportunities and they just assume it's about who you know and a yeah. lot of those people that get the opportunities people don't realize they put in so much work that yeah. they don't talk about and then or they're talented or they're talented <laughs> and a lot of it is like well what do you bring to the table cool like yeah. okay so you hitting up people so you at least have some sort of drive right yeah, like yeah. okay cool you got initiative damn that that's literally like going to a go see yeah. if you directed your energy in the proper places you might actually get somewhere yes let's talk about that model shit okay. go sees go sees go let's talk sees. about the shit that i've only ever heard about on america's next top right. model okay, okay. So wait before you get into that yeah next time someone asks you that just say yes <laughs> and nothing else just say yes. can you put me in movies yes yes <laughs> here you go, <laughs> go. um okay nikki blades as okay. as a model who's, uh -huh. who's been doing a thing Thank maxim you. model before the whole ig model shit yes. was a thing mm -hmm. um let, let's say you had a, a a young girl hit you up okay. and was like I want to be a model. Put me on. In 20... In 20... In 20 now. Okay. Um, and, uh, like, well, tell us about your struggles as a going on go mm -hmm. ass, like, a uh, model in the industry compared to, let's say, someone who is now a, a quote-unquote, uh, Instagram model. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... First off, the whole industry changed a couple years ago where Instagram became a vital part of the industry. Yeah. But before that, you would have to go and find, uh, go to an open call. So what an open call is, is that certain agencies, and they all have different levels. You have a talent agency, you have commercial, commercial and then you have high fashion so you also need to know yourself well enough to figure out which one you probably fit in which a lot of people get their feelings hurt because they go towards things they're not fit for the fashion industry and the modeling industry doesn't give a shit about how you feel they care about what you look like in your statistics mm -hmm. like how tall are you what's your waist what's your bust these certain things so back in the day you would have to go to an open call or you would submit online an open call is like say wednesday's ford modeling would have an opening to people that would be able to walk in scouts would look at them and decide whether or not they would want to see them again were yeah so you would you have opportunities all of these places still have open calls all you need to do is go to the website and they will give you all the answers right there. Mm. So say you weren't able to go to an open call. You were able to submit online. All they would ask for is very simple. You never needed a portfolio. All you needed was a snapshot of your, your straight on headshot, your quarter shot, and then your side profile. Also your statistics, your numbers, and your measurements. Okay. If they want you, they want you. If they don't, they don't. And what you do is you submit to all of them all of them and it's kind of like acting in a sense you have to have a certain list of skills that you're that, that you can do right like okay. i speak a different language i mix i'm this tall like they ask sport. you to speak a different language when yes. you're modeling yes because i can go for commercial work okay so so it's all really intermingled but you go to your go see and hopefully you are able to get 
seen by somebody that would want to add you onto their board. Now, what happens when you get added onto your board? You're normally told you need to go get a portfolio. Mm. So the agency will take you in and they will pay for it mm. to have professional work done. Essentially, all it does is it gets deducted from your job yeah. that you book. And then you end up on, on pretty much a shelf. Now, my modeling career didn't go very well in the sense of I was on a board. I got picked up by an agency. I was scouted super young. But because my look wasn't in at that time, which is an athletic build and a racially ambiguous person, mm. um, I was in between sizes and considered curvy and urban. Okay. So because I was a curvy, urban, racially ambiguous model. <laughs> which is all popping now. Popping yeah. now, which was not then. I couldn't get any work at all. Um, I booked my work because I reached out to people. And one of the things that I did was I went to every website of every company I was interested in that I wanted to work with, scrolled down to the bottom of the page, and it said, contact me. Ah. And I would send out a, like, a pre-made email with my headshots and my stats, and I did it to everyone. Yeah. I also had my own little headshot as a card and it had my headshot with my stats and all my contact information. And I would give that out to people um, in, when I would come to LA or go anywhere and I would give that out as my business card. Yeah. So hoping that if you ever thought about needing somebody, you <laughs> already had my headshot. Do you guys need a hand. racially ambiguous curvy yes. model? Urban. It, <laughs> Urban? Hawaiian, Chinese, Irish, Filipino height <laughs> stats. But but I did that and people don't realize like the hustle that went into it. Like mm. I would take that card everywhere and I did that in college. Wow. And I got that done myself. Nobody helped me. Yeah. And when I got signed to an agency, I actually booked a Adidas on my own. I did an international campaign on my own because they didn't even submit me because they didn't think I would fit what the client was looking for. Mm, yeah. So I submitted myself, showed up. They were actually looking for somebody that could run for a certain amount of time <laughs> that had a size seven and a half foot. And my agency <laughs> didn't realize because that's a standard size for um for when you're going and doing a campaign. Yeah. They have test shoes. So they have shoes that are going to be, you know, eventually put on display, but the models need to wear it. Yeah. They didn't even know that I fit the shoe. Didn't submit me. Didn't know I was athletic. Didn't pay attention. I went to the go. I went to the casting call that I submitted myself to, and I booked the job. And I was literally the only person that they actually saw that was qualified for Dang. it. Then Maxim came around, like came around, and they wanted personality. And Maxim at that time, that's when Instagram started to come out. So I submitted, but then you had to put a video of you speaking. My intro video, I slid in in superhero underwear, and I said, hello. And I went and did my whole little spiel, and that was the only thing that everybody remembered from yeah. that season. They were like, you stood out. So I was able to mix the looks, which I knew wasn't going to get the job, but the personality in with it. Right. So that's how I booked everything because you actually have to have a damn personality as a model. What would you do, Playboy, if they offered it? So I had this conversation with my dad and my mom. <laughs> actually, at 19, I had this conversation okay. with my parents. Um, and it was probably at this age now, if the money was right. Yeah. And it was what it used to be. If Playboy used to be as a, like this huge thing, it was, it was like, huge. oh my god, oh my god, Naomi Drew Campbell, Barrymore, yeah, 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 Barrymore. Yeah. Oh, yes. If if you know, <laughs> but if it was Playboy in its heyday of right. like, damn, you are the baddest bitch walking the fucking earth. If yeah. you were in Playboy, then a thousand percent yes. Yeah. But for what Playboy is now, why? Yeah. So why? Do, do hustler now. Yeah. You yeah. know, just spread them over. Black tail. Black tail. Yeah. Just so, the what? Show magazine. Like, Show. Side note. Shout out to all my friends that did show magazine. <laughs> all my friends and to the uh, to the people that tried to get me to do show. I love y'all. Um, I, I would have Mad Magazine. If I would have had more ass. Look, Jesus and the doctors didn't give me ass for a reason because I wouldn't know how to act. Who but, does magazines anymore? Uh, that was the only way before Instagram came yeah, out. Yeah. You were if you didn't have and, and to this day if you don't got a magazine like watch yourself like watch your tone when you speak to somebody <laughs> if you ain't never had a billboard if you ain't never walked in a runway show you ain't never had a campaign you ain't never been in a magazine like 
understand your lane, which is everybody's lane is cool. Damn. But there's a lot of disrespect. <laughs> there's a lot of disrespect from people who have never been. I mean, that's what it used to be, right? You had to get a campaign. Yeah. I've I've had billboards. I did magazines. I did international. Okay, so stuff. would you do Playboy today? No, I mean they don't even show anything. So I guess yes. Okay, okay, okay. So check this out. Right, because Playboy ain't what it used I, to be. I haven't looked, but I know they're like online now. It's like a yeah. scene. I know. Yeah, it it's is. okay. Playboy isn't what it used so to be. So Play, Playboy in his day when when Hillary. Ben Banks got Hell. offered to do Playboy. Uh, yeah, yes. So big bag, but also uh, you to- are not- top of the coochie, but not spread open coochie. Right. Would you be doing it? Yes. Oh my yes. God. You were like the epitome of the most. Uh, I love how I look without clothes on. And I think that is beautiful. I thought Playboy did a really great job of right. showing diversity. Also, they did that shit way before Sports Illustrated attempted to show uh, body acceptance. And side note, why does Sports Illustrated always pick the worst pictures of these girls? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think they try to show that they're real, but you're yeah. not picking a lot of real looking women interesting but playboy is glorified right like yeah. it's the epitome of femininity playboy was gorgeous. like the like oh, yo oh my god this lighting. celebrity did playboy oh. and it was also considered like the classy one right it's because beautiful. it wasn't spread eagle shit no. it was if anything it was the top of the coochie with a little bit of hair there, there, there's some <laughs> and then a lot of the bodies were real yeah a lot of the bodies were natural and just the way that you saw them because i remember looking at playboy and I've seen a lot I've seen Hustler and I grew up looking at magazines and whatnot and I was like ew that's too much (laughs) but there was they're just so pretty and the glow and the way that it's shot and as somebody that's a model like you dream of having that photo shoot and I definitely tried to replicate that as much (laughs) as possible I did the you know like the implied and the wet and the artistic but Playboy was always a conversation to most models yeah I think one of the first shoots I saw of you was um Marilyn Tang, matter of fact, and yeah. it was an implied nudity. It was oh, like it was so nakedness on a couch with a, uh, a I don't I forgot what was it was with my the where, flower in her butt the flower in her butt or is <laughs> no a the plant. cactus it was, was it a, the cactus no, it was it was basically oh, I it was, was making that yes, up no, it no, was no, no. Was a plant it, it was a plant yeah, covering your naughty bits yeah and I I his was crazy right is I've known matter of fact Marilyn yeah um so dope since way back mm-hmm. like we were um. She was from Long Beach as yeah. well. We sh- we did that shoot in Long Beach. She shot one of my first ever like real like photo shoots. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, she she did some type of photo shoot. Uh, she was just doing her thing, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we're from Long Beach, and I, I I had a video back in the day called Dick Slang, where I was um laughing at a dance called the Dick Slang, and then she did some shit called the Tit Slang, and then we started talking, and she she did some like some 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 photo shoots for me, and then um. So I've known her for a minute. That might have been how I found. Man, I don't even know how I started I talking know. to you. I don't even know. I don't even remember at but, this point. <laughs> but Marilyn is crazy because she did one of our first goodie photo shoots. Mm-hmm. The and first then, one. Yes. And she was like, hey, man. And this photo shoot was with Leanne V. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Marilyn was like, yo, I'm not going to charge you. If you could just get me to 10,000 followers, that would be, that would be great. And um, this was like early beginnings of shit, right? And I was like, easy. I got her 10,000 followers. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, next season, she was, like, fucking, um, um, what's his name? Skrillex is, like, yeah. main photographer Mar- on tour with him. She's one of the first photographers that I, I mean, there's a lot of photographers that at the time, when everybody was popping into Instagram and the models were transitioning and realized, like, there's real fucking money in this Instagram stuff. Yeah. And a lot of these girls, if you stuck in the traditional shit, you was going to get left behind, so you adapt. Yeah. She came out with such dope work and yes. one of the one of the shots that one of the first shots that did the best for me with her was actually um i was in the couch and my legs and my waist were out of the couch like yes. you couldn't even see my face and i that, remember that that one went viral and it was uh my underwear was around my ankles mm-hmm. but you couldn't see me so it was a side silhouette and the way that it was shot was just so crazy it was crazy it was and dirty it was and just dope. oh i loved it and then we did the supreme cactus so the, uh, she did a lot of body, like body shots. Yeah. And so it was, um, I wasn't wearing any, I wasn't wearing anything. Mm. And and the cactus was just covering me. Yeah. That was it. As everybody did pauses she, to Google. Pauses right? to Google Did it. she draw inspiration? Was she, it like, oh, you're prickly. Well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, it was not. I mean, go look up the images. That was a conversation with my parents. They were like, so you're just going to be. The rule with my parents is uh, no, don't show your vagina yeah. and avoid nipples as much as possible. Yeah. But everything else is totally okay. Yeah. Which, yeah. again, if you model and to the girls and the guys that are out there, if you love your parents, you will have a real <laughs> conversation with them. Yeah. My parents accept me. They love me. I never dealt with the shit that a lot of models deal with. But so Marilyn, we did a shot. I was spread like this and then I had the cactus. And then another one, we were in the middle of the street in Long Beach and I'm shooting uh, water into my mouth in a swimsuit in the middle of the road. And uh, we got told by people in Long Beach to get the fuck up out of there. I don't know if block. I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. But we did a couple. Marilyn was really, she was super dope and it was really nice. There was a time when Instagram was doing more arti artistic yeah. shots and you used to have to work with photographers. Um, Sydney was one of the models that he used to, yeah. Sydney, we gotta get her on here. Love yeah. her. So she's super dope and, I, and we've worked with a lot of the same photographers and there's a whole group of girls that did very similar things during that period of time. But Nowadays, it's different. Yo, take fucking pictures. There's scouts everywhere. Post up your headshots. Be creative. You can get picked up on anything, but you won't get it just by writing Tim. Or writing Let me ask you this. Oh. Let me ask you this. Um, so aside from Playboy, okay. um, what would it take for Nikki Blades in today's day and age to do a nude photo shoot? Like full? I'm talking about not implied nipples out. Like bare breast, bare titty photo shoot. Not spread eagle, but yeah, artistic with it. I mean, at this point, probably nothing. There's, mm. there's literally no leverage at this point. Yeah. Like I've done implied, unless it's OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean, and I'm making hella money off yeah. of it. But I've done implied for so long yeah. that it's almost like a waste. Like a nipple being out or being fully naked nowadays is just like a dime a dozen. It, <laughs> like the human, like the female body, don't hold the same weight it used to. Like, oh, we saw her nipple. Wrong. I just, for me, there's nah, no, yeah, wrong. but there's no money, but there's no money amount <laughs> right yeah. now. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no money amount. There's no Playboy. There's no accolade. There's no movie role. There's, <clears throat> there's nothing that I could say that like, cool, that's worth it. Now, if I decide that something fits and I want to have my nipple out because I want to have, I want to be naked, then yeah. But that's because the price isn't what it used to be. I yeah. think, okay, that's what you do you know what I mean? The yeah. price isn't what it used yeah. to be. I think the price would come with, with the fact that you've, built this audience now yeah through being nikki blades mm -hmm. through the no chaser podcast yes. through the jk news fans loving yeah. you mm -hmm. if you were to go on only fans not even only fans just anywhere anywhere mm -hmm. but you just do be... anticipation yeah hey yeah. i'm going to drop <laughs> now that right. they love you so much because it's for it's for me versus like i needed play you ne people needed playboy back in the day right. to become established right you needed that once in a lifetime oh my god holly berry showing her tits was like the epitome oh, of and her swordfish yeah. that was that was like that's the epitome of her career it was though, like for it a was lot like of next level shit like yeah. to see some holly berry nipples yeah. and swordfish was like mind blowing, and yeah. then to see her get fucked yeah. in Monsters Ball. But it, it did take over. But it took yes. over. Yeah. Nobody knows anything else she really did or any of her other roles. Nobody cares. Yeah, that's why. Would a million dollars be a good number? <laughs> not that I'm not that I'm offering. I'm just yeah, yeah, asking. Yeah. As what? Just to just a be million naked dollars for just what? A, a naked photo Can it shoot. be tax free? Um, <laughs> no, with taxes. So you oh, no. make, so make no. it like five hundred thousand. Okay, no. five hundred thousand nipples. Uh, top of the coochie, um, not spread eagle, only top of the coochie. Would you do it? Five hundred thousand. Where is it going? Going to, to your bank account. Oh, where's the no, picture going? It, where's it's the just gonna going? be on the internet. Be online. People can people can Google it. Okay, okay, okay. So it's it's um the the, the reason why I pause is because I've definitely shot shit for no no money right because mm. i liked it because yeah, i right. was feeling myself so you can throw a dollar amount on it but if like say you catch me on a day that i'm like i'm fucking feeling this and i think i'm beautiful and whatever yeah. i might just fuck around and do it because it's right. not even about the money anymore because okay. the five hundred thousand, let's be real like money is that's it's gone it's gone and like it's quickly doesn't matter that's doesn't forever have to be. <laughs> well, well the images are forever right the money is temporary the yes. images are forever okay, yes. so when you think of it that way that if i just find something that i love and i really want to just embrace myself and i can live with my decision no matter the dollar amount yeah. uh then then yeah yeah the reason the reason i asked that is because i feel like girls like you and your position who have a following 
who are known for more, but still people want to see you naked. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to charge a dollar. Yeah. And get a million people to, you know <laughs> totally. what I'm saying? It, it it would be like a quick, and if it were OnlyFans, you could literally charge the lowest amount <laughs> and make millions because if it gets out that, oh, she's actually naked on yeah. there, people are going to come every month, especially for that low ass yeah. amount. So I just always wonder like why girls who are down to be naked don't leverage it in that way. Um, <laughs> I think about OnlyFans on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> I think about it every day. Shout out to the girls that are getting all their fucking money and establishing fucking lives off of it. You guys are doing really well. Um, for me, I think because of where I'm at in my life. Mm. Now, if OnlyFans would have came around when I was doing the like Maryland, the Maryland stuff, I got a video of me holding like I have a, a picture of me holding my boobs, covering my nipples, eating ramen. Like that shit to me was just so sexy, and I loved being sexy. I mm. loved all. All of that type of stuff. But where I'm at now, it's just not the same so feeling. Have to feel it. I'd have to feel it. Say, or else it doesn't feel wrong. Then it, then yeah. it feels wrong. Yeah. Then it feels like I'm just doing this for money. Like, then I'm just doing it for money. But yeah. I used to do photo shoots because I absolutely was in love with photo shoots and arts and some of the stuff I did with, like, Van Styles. And I have so many images that I personally love because, to me, that's what modeling was. Yeah. It was art. I got you. But yeah. but nowadays, like, I could literally send a fucking foot pic and make all that money if True. I wanted to catch that, if I True. wanted to catch a bag. Yeah. Now... Say I catch in the swing of things and I'm like, cool, I want to get back into modeling. I don't necessarily know if I would want to do it for OnlyFans. I yeah. think that I still would want to explore uh, different platforms. Like, I still would want a magazine. Yeah. Right. I still want billboards. I still want those things. Yeah, because you come from, you know, the traditional, yeah. like, kind of aspect of, of modeling yeah. and being a model, right? And, and, and I understand like, that. I still suck it in all the goddamn... I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking of those things. Yeah. Um, and I and I love it. I, I think it's a, really an art form, and that's why there's such a difference between an Instagram model and who you see in Vogue. No, I get you. I mean, it, it's the same way where I feel like, um, like, how do you I, feel about rap? <laughs> well, well, before we get into that, like, in the in the sense where I kind of, um, I get hit up to do a lot of hosty things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, because I know, like. Like, I'm good at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good at reading off a prompter. I'm good at hosting shit. But, like, at, at the end of the day, I really want to do scripted content. Yeah. I want to be an actor. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. don't want to be pigeonholed into being a fucking, like, Ryan Seacrest, Mario Lopez situation. Yeah. Right? And shout out to them. They're killing it. They're, probably, they're, right. ma they're making so much but that's money. Their, that's their job. That's their shit. That's, yeah. And that's kind of what they get hit up for. Right. I want to act. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. And it's like where the like I've turned down uh game show shit. I've turned down like reality show shit mm -hmm. because yeah. I don't want that stigma to be held over my like career. Cause that I, shit sticks. Yeah, it yeah. does stick. It you know? Sticks. And, and 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 I don't wanna do that. I I wanna act. And um so I get where you're coming from. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where you kind of hold this uh this like this aura of like yeah. modeling, I love like the it. real mo the quote unquote real, real modeling mod shit yeah. to be a thing, you know, and, yeah. I, and I get that. Yeah, I got into radio of all things, of all realms of entertainment that I could have gotten into. Yeah, I went from modeling in Maxim and being in a swimsuit on a daily basis to being able to speak yeah. from like in a market for in San Francisco, and I did that to prove a point because. I eventually realized that modeling only goes so far. Yeah. And if I can turn myself into the brand, then I can go further. Say something happens to my face. Say I put on weight. Say I have a baby. Say I don't live in LA. Like yeah. San Francisco shut down all of its all of its fashion industry. And I did that when I moved out to the Bay. Yeah. So I've seen what happens in these times. And I went, because I appreciate it so much and realized, mm, maybe I'm not going to be in it the way that I used to think of it yeah. now i'm gonna develop another skill so i went from being the face to being a voice and yeah. now finding the hybrid of it which is what i think is beautiful about this here because everybody in this room does multiple things yeah. and may and it may not be the thing that they're known for like what you're known for isn't why you're sitting here right now you've added to that because you have so much value like True. yeah you do this you do this but damn i really want to get to know them 
cool. Yeah. And then that's why we're all in this space. That's that's interesting because I think everybody has a little bit of that, like what you guys are talking about. You don't want to take these roles because you want to be this. You want to be this. And I have that for different shit, but in the entertainment, I'm like, man, y'all tripping. <laughs> because like, okay, I look at Flo Rida and Pitbull. All right. Flo Rida and Pitbull can rap. Both of them Pitbull are fucking, can fucking rappers. Spurs, rapper, rappers. Rappers. People wouldn't know that. But that wouldn't make money. Right. Right. So they turn into Mr. 305 right. and fucking right round. <laughs> because. <laughs> and they're balling. And it's like, okay, this yeah. is what I'm going to do. Because right. that's that, That's more of me with the entertainment shit. But. Anything that works. But then there's other things where it's like, okay, let's take the clothing line. Yeah. I know we could just flip what another brand is doing, charge a little less, and be out of here. Right. Mm-hmm. We. We have the same people who used to make the fear of God shit. Like, literally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We could knock off all of fucking Jerry Lorenzo shit, charge a little bit less, and get crazy money. But for me, it's like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. We trying to be innovative and You know shit. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I want to be like, The, the sacrifice is worth what it. what kind of shirt do yeah. you think? You know what I'm saying? Like, I want everything we wear, I want us to be okay with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Shit like that. But yeah, when it comes to entertainment, I'm like, man, but do that shit. You know, you know what I mean. But everybody has their <laughs> their own thing. Their, yeah. their own thing. Like, mm. it's really interesting to see because there was a point in time where there were certain jobs for modeling I refused to do. Yeah. I was like, I cannot be in another damn music video. Like, I can't <laughs> be in a music video. Yeah. I can't do this. I'm, uh, you know, I I did music videos, but I had a, which ones? I did well. The original Collar Green video actually shot. That never came out. I did that. I was in a few other ones. I was in like Tyga's video back what? in the day. Which one? Yeah, but I never thrill in Manila. Nikki Blaze is gonna be uh, <laughs> lip syncing August Rigo's part. I and am. It's not fair. We got the music video. We shooting real soon. Yeah. It's not fair. Look for that on iTunes and uh-huh. all that. It's, it's out right now. And it's, it's so, so funny because Tim was like, "Can you lip sync?" I said, "Have you ever seen my Instagram? <laughs> like I'm singing all the time." I swipe through. Yeah, you do. You like <laughs> you like man. I don't care about her, but yeah. I'm gonna hire her from a video though. I'm gonna bring her in. But there was a there was a big point in time where I had to shift away from the urban, and that's such a it's so bad that they use it the way they use it. But the urban um stereotype which mm-hmm. means they only looked at me yeah. a type of way which means i wasn't going to be able to do any fashion stuff because they were like you have like honestly they were like your boobs are too big they mm-hmm. flat out oh, were like for the high fashion for the high yeah. fashion they were like the high you can only do swimwear right or you can only do this and then you kind of look at yourself that way too i was like damn i guess i only can yeah and then you realize oh fuck i forgot why i was even here in the first place and it had nothing to do with what i look like yeah because they only want me to do like fitness stuff and <laughs> that's like, it and they're like i'm more than ten, like rick like, i need you to like keep your shirt on <laughs> why do you keep getting naked in front of the camera every time we bring it out <laughs> so weird but i want i want to circle back to something because you brought up a point that actually answers the questions about why that dude hit you up ah. <laughs> um when you talked about the photographer okay. and her saying don't pay me just get me to ten thousand followers okay and you did yeah that's why because that's, why that's what people up. see they see that type of shit and everybody has this i could do that mm. attitude nobody wants to look at the work yeah. Like with you, all the stuff you were saying about the modeling and stuff, mm-hmm. none of that shit people believe probably. It's like, oh, no, yeah. you look good. Yeah. You go and look good yeah, and they you... pick you. Oh, they didn't pick me because I don't know this person. I don't know that person. They never realize I didn't put enough work yeah, in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People see you, they see me. Like back when I was actually doing the YouTube shit. Yeah, yeah. All the time. That was the thing. You Because they think of me Tim. putting you on. Yeah. Right. Mm. But it's like, yes. Tim had a big following. I did something with Tim. His following came to me. But why did they stay? Exactly. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Of course. People, they don't get that far. They right. just feel like, okay, if this person gives me a shout out, mm-hmm. I'm going to get what All that person got. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it don't work like that. We've done countless videos with countless girls <laughs> that did great views and then nothing came of those girls because right. those girls didn't have talent at all. Then there were other girls who were funny or they had some other talent or their Instagram was naked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's that's a talent too. Yeah. Keeping yeah. up with your body totally. and posting that shit, all yeah. of that. And they got the following and people stayed and they keep keeping up with them. And that's the shit people do not 
want to realize, I yeah. think. I it's got, more so, oh, got, put me on. I got called the biggest clout chaser because I was on here. I was like, the fuck you think I got in this position? <laughs> How you think I got here and stayed here for this long? Like, it, it, it is insane because... Like you said, they won't believe it. Yeah. I had emails and emails that were pre-made. I have cards that were pre-made. Like, cards. Car- you know, everybody had their thing that they did that nobody understood why they were doing it. Mm-hmm. Like anybody who's in the position they are in today, there were people in the background going, damn, I hope you make it because you put in a whole lot of effort into this. If yeah. it go- doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But like you said, they only see the <laughs> surface That's level. the thing too. It's like, yeah, I work with Marilyn because I thought she was dope. Yeah. yeah. And these kids, they don't see that, right? Yeah. They yeah. see that, like, all I need is somebody with clout, as yeah. he said, yeah. Yeah. to put me on. But it's like, and, I, and I, I told him, I was like, do you have any type of videos of you acting? Do you have yeah. a reel? The bare do have, minimum. Do you have fucking videos of you in a high school play? Do you have a reason why I should even feel like you are good at acting for me to want to put you on? Yeah. And like, do you have anything? And he had nothing for me. I'm yeah. like, dog, what? It's what? the entitlement. Yes. It's the, you got into that position. How'd you get there? I deserve yeah. it. Give it to me. Bro, they really feel like it's just that easy. Yeah. And it sucks so much more for girls because when they call you a clout chaser, it's mm-hmm. like, wait, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing that makes them feel like you're just here to get clout. But the thing is when there's an attractive girl in the vicinity of a popular dude, Mm -hmm. they automatically think something more than what you see is going on. And they put that on her. Oh, she only fucking with him. And that's, and, and that's why I always, and why do you, and that's why radio is so important. And that's why it was so important to me to stick with it in an mm. industry that is uh, semi-dying to some people. It, it's dying in a sense to some. Mm. And I'm young in the game in, in radio. And I wanted to get into that to prove a point. And I proved it. Like, yeah. I sh- I can sit here with you. And Tim actually reached out to me because of radio. Yeah. It was, I'm not his most popular friend or his most attractive friend or like not at all. And there's a bunch of different girls that could be sitting in this spot that would probably get way more views, but there's a difference. Nah, they would have been whack though. (laughs) Damn right. That's the thing. But, 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 but the work ethic behind it and why being in radio. And then when people say shit like that, I just laugh. I said, sir, do you know I have a 401k? I wake up 4 a.m. every morning to work with professionals and I have health insurance. Don't talk to me about where I belong. Hey, she got big titties. Damn right I do and I hide them because I can. <laughs> Bitches, funny. and if I wanted to show them off, I could and you would love it and you would pay for my feet pics. Yeah, but it's so interesting because you can say all that shit, they are not gonna care. No, but and that's, it's so but you gotta evident. know it If though. you guys look at the last episode, right? There's a point where tim leaves he goes to pee right away nikki picks up the conversation yes right away and i trust y'all to do that <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's like if it was just a oh she got titties we gotta use her for a thumbnail that type of shit wouldn't happen no <laughs> you know what i'm saying i could have had some look look I, you know look we've been doing this shit for a long time mm-hmm. the youtube shit for a long time and and we've we've played the whole game of let's put a pretty girl in the thumbnail mm-hmm. Sexy shit to get views. We've done that, right? Yeah. This is a podcast yeah. where people are listening. Yeah. And when I hit up Blade specifically, not only did I, you know, have like we were cool beforehand, but I knew that like, yes, I needed a pretty girl to have a female perspective, but also I needed somebody who could keep up with the conversation. Yeah, and nigga don't ever shut up. So we <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> you already knew. I was yes. like, kick everybody out. I'm gonna like, say, hi, this is No Chaser Podcast with yes. me, myself, and I. Welcome. Like, you look, there's there's a, a, a look, a pretty face is a dime a <laughs> dozen. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, but look, but look, I, if I wanted just a pretty face, I would just have me on this shit. But I wanted engaging. Face, not hands, Tim. <laughs> not face. hands. Wait, face, watch not the hands. last episode. But I Make wanted sure up to date. A, 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 a female perspective that could keep up with me and Rick, and that's why I hit up Nikki Blades, okay? Mm. And we out here, and you guys enjoy it, and I'm glad you guys are here, and thank you for watching the No Chase yeah. Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm Tim Chant the Wrong Suit. I'm Ricky Shucks. And you already know my damn name. Peace, bitch! <laughs> 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 That's so aggressive. <laughs>